President Bashar al-Assad's regime is believed to be preparing for its final assault on the last major rebel stronghold in the country, Idlib. And the president, as usual, has plenty of backup. At least 10 Russian warships and two submarines have been deployed to the eastern Mediterranean, the largest naval buildup since Moscow's intervention first began back in 2015. Well, the UN is warning that the assault on Idlib could displace as many as 800,000 people the representative of the United Nations Humanitarian Coordination Office, Linda Tom, adding that the number of people who are in need of humanitarian assistance, which is already high, could increase dramatically. She joins us now from Damascus. Linda, thank you very much for being with us. And Linda, as you know, uh, warnings like this, uh, UN warnings like this one about the dire situation of uh, civilians in Syria have been made before. Do you feel like this warning could resonate further now that this massive of assault is likely to happen on Idlib? Well, we certainly hope so. What is um, particularly concerning about the situation in the Northwest is that we ha we're talking about a very large number of people. We estimate that close to 3 million people live in the Idlib de-escalation zone, and of that 3 million, 2 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance. Should there be a military escalation, the number of people in need may rise even further. Linda, uh, the UN, you are predicting about 800,000 people are going to be displaced from that province. Where are they going to go? Is the UN forecasting where the crisis is going to move to? Well, of course, we're not able to say exactly what is going to happen, but we're making preparations. You know, should there be a military escalation, you know, we think that people will be fleeing to areas where they think are safe include the Euphrates Shield area and also to government uh, controlled areas. But uh, what matters is that uh, this is an area where people are already extremely vulnerable, where many people have already been displaced multiple times, and where civilians will be put in the line of fire and may risk being displaced once more. Linda, we mentioned earlier in the program this issue of de-escalation zones in Syria and whether or not they do hold as de-escalation zones. But when we're looking at the uh, dire humanitarian situation there, how much is uh, humanitarian aid from the outside world able to reach these uh, provinces uh, in Syria like Idlib that need it the most? Well, right now, we can say that through cross-border um, assistance, we are able to continue to provide humanitarian assistance to people in the Northwest, and that includes Idlib. So, for example, in July, we provided a six 180,000 people with food assistance. And in addition to that, we have provided a quarter of million people with medical aid. However, should there be further military escalation in this area, those operations could be jeopardized. Linda, uh, I, I want to focus on this planned offensive in Idlib, the Assad regime backed by Russia. We hear a lot of warnings over the last few days, the words chemical attack thrown around. Uh, what is your estimation? Is the UN on guard for a chemical attack? Do you expect that to happen? And is there any recourse? Is there any way to stop it from happening? I mean, what we're talking about here is that if there's any sort of military escalation, that this will have an impact on civilians. We know that of the people who are in Idlib right now, and this is a very densely populated area, that we have a large number of women and children and civilians who need protection. And this is protection from all types of violence. Um, we also know that in the past weeks that, you know, we have heard reports of airstrikes and of, um, and of mortar attacks. And of course, we have also heard reports of fighting between non-state armed groups. And this is all having an impact on civilians. Uh, Linda, of course, this is not the first time the UN is concerned about a, a specifically Russian uh, action uh, in Russia. It has condemned or criticized actions by Russia in Syria before. Uh, is there any hope, do you think, that this time around when the UN is warning this many people, 800,000 people, could be displaced if Moscow moves forward with this potential assault, that Moscow will even listen? Well, we hope so. I mean, right now, you know, we're calling on all parties to the conflict to um, to really, um, you know, think about the civilians that will be impacted by any escalation in fighting. We're hoping that negotiations will prevail and that um, a solution can be found so that um, civilians can continue to receive the assistance that Linda. they have the right to receive. Uh, but and, uh, that, uh, 
Yeah. It, well, well, just today, I mean, it's hard to talk about this without remembering what we heard just today in Moscow from the Russian foreign minister himself. He said that Russia wants to liquidate the abscess, referring to part or all of Idlib province, not clear. Uh, he's talking about whatever they consider to be terrorists. Isn't that raising alarm bells at the UN? You know, it's um, the situation is raising alarm bells, absolutely, mainly because, you know, this is a situation that has been ongoing, not just in the past couple of weeks, but it's also something that has been going on for years since the beginning of the crisis. So it has been seven years that people in Idlib have continued to face violence. And we fear that, um, you know, um, parties in conflict not be able but to come to an agreement that it will get much worse. Linda, well, just stay with us. I want to show our viewers some images from another part of Syria because there are so many different stories in Syria, sort of different realities happening at the same time. Just a few kilometers from the president's palace, this is what it looks like. Residents of the Damascus suburb of Daraya returning to their homes. That was one of the very first places to rise up against Assad's rule, but the president's military and its allies regained control under a deal with rebel forces. Linda, residents like that coming back home, any sense what they are coming back to? And I mean, that's very close to where you are now in Damascus. Well, in the case of Daraya, we have uh, heard also the same reports that people are returning. Um, however, uh, from our uh, reports, we understand that a great deal of Daraya has actually been damaged or destroyed and that um, uh, basic infrastructure and basic um, services like electricity and water have yet to return. So people are returning to uh, areas, even if, if when they are able to return, to homes that have been uh, devastated, um, to services and um, and areas that need um, that need a lot of work in order for people to um, have what they need. All right, Linda, we'll let you take that other call. Linda Tom in Damascus, uh, thanks very much for being with us. Some very important information to get from the UN right now. Again, as the UN is warning, 800,000 people are expected to be displaced in that coming offensive in Idlib.